Hey guys, this is Todd, Sean, and Nate, and we are from the Middle Aged and Creeped Out podcast. We drop full episodes every Wednesday night or Thursday morning, and our Middle Aged mini episodes drop on Saturday afternoons at 3 o'clock. And if you enjoy discussions about the paranormal, weird, unexplained, and just plain creepy, then check out our show. You can find us however you listen to your favorite podcasts. If you like what you hear, don't hesitate to give us a five star rating and review. Telling a friend, family member, or even a coworker about us helps the show. And you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Middle Aged and Creeped Out. And our TikTok is at Mako Podcast. And that's with two A's. Well, Nate, what do you think? That's the end of our promo, and that's a wrap. Well, there you go. So until next time, Creepies, Nate is your sound engineer. We are your hosts, Todd and Sean. And they are middle-aged and creeped out. Keep it creepy. <laughs> you ever seen a ghost? Been abducted? Heard your name whispered from the other room when you're all alone? No, you say? Me either. But if you're like me, you're still fascinated by the paranormal. It seems everyone else has had an experience, and you want to believe it all. So why doesn't it happen to us? What does it all mean? How does it work? Is any of it real? Welcome to Paranorm Girl, a show that will attempt to answer these questions by taking the paranormal completely apart in search of proof. I'm not a blind believer, nor a hardened skeptic. I'm just looking for answers and willing to accept what I find. Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl podcast. I am your host, Kristen. That promo you heard heading up the episode today was from the Middle-Aged and Creeped Out podcast. Just want to remind you all to head on over wherever you might be listening and subscribe and definitely, for sure, catch their newest episode going up tomorrow evening featuring Todd, Sean, Nate, and myself, But give the rest of their episodes a little listen, too, because they put on a really wonderful, funny, and entertaining show. Before we get to the lovely, lovely chat I had recently with my guests, I want to thank each and every one of you who have checked out my friend Dave's Kickstarter campaign to launch the paranormal-friendly, oddity, alien, cryptid-infused tarot of the unexplained that he has been diligently designing as of this recording. He has about a week left to make his crowdfunding campaign goal. I know how hard he has been at work on this project and he is so very close. And I just wanna remind you, Malikeness is somewhere in that deck. You'll just have to get you some cards when they're ready to see it for yourself. So if you haven't, do please check out that link in the show notes and share with your friends. With that, let's get right into it. Please enjoy my conversation with investigators Damien and Josh from RKB Paranormal. Damien and Josh started RKB Paranormal in June of 2020. They've been best friends for 30 years and have had a common interest in the paranormal since they were teenagers. During those years, they, along with their other best friend, Keith, spent countless hours in any abandoned house or cemetery they heard was haunted, and they investigated. As the years passed, starting an actual paranormal team was something they always wanted to do. In June of 2011, their friend Keith, who was a police officer in their hometown of Dixon, Tennessee, was shot and killed in the line of duty. At that time, their dream of starting a team took a huge hit. But in June of 2020, after an investigation with a few friends at Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary, they decided it was time to officially start their team. And to honor their fallen friend, they named their team after him, using his initials, becoming RKB Paranormal. RKB consists of Damien, his wife Kelly, Josh, his wife Angel, and their good friends Mark and Adam. Josh and Damien, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Morning. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, How are you guys doing? Doing pretty good. How about yourself? been busy this morning you know like i was was saying before we uh before we started recording a little feel a little under the weather but you know i got my coffee and uh you know doing doing all right i'll pull myself up by my my bootstraps we'll be good (laughs) but this is this should be exciting i've been really excited to uh to uh talk to you guys i've been enjoying the 
evidence that you have posted to YouTube and your TikTok page, which is very, very active. I need to take some notes from you guys. Um, you guys get a lot of really great evidence, a lot of great uh, investigations. And uh, can I just say, please keep the blooper reel a regular thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun to watch. Um, I, I've thought about doing something similar on this show, but I, I never think before I uh, delete the uh, <laughs> the audio. Uh, when wh about what time did you guys realize you had some some funny stuff to put together? Um, I was just sitting here one day, and I was like, you know, there's when I was going over some evidence from our most recent when there was two or three times where you know something happened that was funny. I was like, you know, that's happened a lot where we'll get spooked by each other or you know, something else was spooky. So it's not paranormal. So I was like, I'm going to go through all of our stuff and you just kind of put together a little reel. And unfortunately there was like a whole another section of like mannequin scares. I wanted to have from two different locations and I lost all of that video. So I wasn't able to include that, but that was, those, those were pretty priceless. Oh no, you lost <laughs> it. Like it just kind of disappeared on you. It was an the, accident. The, I don't know the memory card it was all saved on like the memory card is is not functioning right anymore so like nothing will pull up on it so oh bummer i would love to see that well i mean the way you guys are going you'll you'll definitely have more to share at some point <laughs> so uh rkb has been officially investigating since 2020 but it sounds like you guys have from the sounds of your bio you've been at this for quite some time um investigating and exploring in one way or another since you guys were teenagers um what do you think was the driving inspirations behind becoming a team back in those early days like like what made you guys want to do this back in the beginning um i think for me it was just just trying to figure out all these questions we always had like you know how, how does this stuff happen you know and we had always heard of all these all these different locations. I was like, man, we'd love to to do that. And for me, it was always just I wanted questions answered. Yeah, Josh. Yeah, I mean, kind of the same way. I mean, <clears throat> there's a whole lot of unknown and unanswered questions. And then there again, then how do we how do we record it and, and document it and, and show the the non-believers of the world that you know there there really is paranormal out there that can be captured and proven as real yeah yeah well had had you guys either of you had your own personal paranormal experiences up up to that point no oh, i had a lot <laughs> oh really really yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear yeah. it. i remember one of my earliest ones i was i don't know probably eight or nine years old we lived in these apartments and my parents were gone somewhere and I was outside with one of my friends just playing and we wanted to, there was something in my room that we needed to get. So we ran back into my apartment and when we walked in, it sounded like there was somebody in the living room snoring. I was like, well, we just kind of looked at each other like, well, that's weird. Went back to my room, got, ever, got whatever we was needing to get, came back out and we heard it again. We just kind of looked at each other and we looked over to the couch and it looked like somebody was laying on the couch and like the cushions like raised up. Like somebody just got up and we kind of, you know, being nine years old, we just kind of freaked out and took off running out of the house. And, you know, I told my mom about it and she's like, oh, you know, you imagine that. But there was numerous things just in that that apartment complex that I experienced in two or three different apartments that we lived in that was just just really weird. Wow. Yeah. And that started so young, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, that's that's pretty undeniable stuff to happen at that point. I can see why you would be inspired to want to know a little bit more. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. What about you, Josh? Yeah, I mean, kind of the same, you know, house I grew up in was always had something going on. Uh, probably the one that most people talk about that's that stayed at my house growing up, Damien included, was the rocking chair in the living room. Uh, we had a, it was my great grandfather's uh, rocking chair. And every morning at like two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, it would just start rocking on its own. And, and so there was, there was stuff like that all the time in my, in my house, whether the rocking chair or uh, the closet doors opening and closing and slamming shut. And uh, it was, it was always one thing or another. 
it, it was it was to the point when I would stay at his house on the weekends, like I would refuse to sleep in his brother's room by myself. Like his brother <laughs> didn't live there anymore. And I was like, man, I'm not sleeping in there because I didn't <laughs> want the closet door to pop open in the middle of the night and scare the crap out of me. So I would just sleep in the floor beside him. I was like, I, I was like, I can't I couldn't bring myself to do it. I mean, I was interested by it, but I was like, man, I don't want this to happen in the middle of the night by myself, and I have no clue what to do, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I mean, what do you even do in that situation? That's Well, that's interesting. Like, you guys had these uh, kind of scary events, and you didn't know how to explain it, but instead of just being fully afraid of it and following that fear and be like, nope, 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 never going to, I don't want anything to do with it, you, you actually went the opposite way and decided, no, let's, let's learn what this is. Let's figure it out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so since starting with uh, RKB and doing all of the investigations that you do, like, like, you know, you continue to investigate, you continue to believe in the paranormal. I, I'm assuming that you've had some crazy experiences there. Like, have you, have you guys uh, been able to see any apparitions at this point? I know a lot of paranormal investigators will actually report um, shadow people, you know, seeing shadow people or, you know, things supporting or thing, things like that. Like, what have you experienced? Um, I know I've seen shadow figures a, a few times. Um, I don't think we've actually seen a full-blown apparition yet. Um, it's mostly just been shadow figures. Um, I think Josh might have, might have seen something at the last place we were at. Um, wasn't it like a white mist or something you'd seen kind of in the out of the corner of your eye? Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, is we don't we don't really talk about a lot of those things in, in any of the things that we're doing because we're – we're real big on what we can prove is what we like to show and tell people because there's, you know, so many critics out there that, that want to, you know, say that we're just over dramatizing everything whenever it's, it's not. So we usually don't talk about many things that we can't prove or show that we've captured rather with video or audio. And so we usually just don't bring up some of the things that we just actually see. Yeah, yeah, I get that. There's a lot of skepticism and it is kind of hard. I mean, you know, having the story is one thing and you guys know what you experienced, but unfortunately, you know, you still have to have that that hard proof, that hard capture. Mm -hmm. Um and and uh these these things apparitions love to be elusive, don't they? <laughs> right. They oh, like yeah. <laughs> so, how many investigations has RKB actually conducted? Um, I'd say roughly about 19 or 20. Wow. Wow. That's, that's quite a handful since 2020. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Well, what's, uh, what are some of the most notable or, or memorable locations you've investigated? Um, definitely at the top of the list would be, um, the old Scott County jail in, in Huntsville, Tennessee. That's, that, that was probably our most active night. Um, that definitely stands at the top of the list. I know Brushy Mountain, was a very active night for us. Um, Octagon Hall up in Franklin, Kentucky was super active. We had a lot of weird stuff happen at um, there's an old post office in Harriman, Tennessee. That was yeah. that was a really weird one. Um, three of us actually got scratched at that location, um, which was which was a first. Um, we, we've we've been to a lot of active locations. Um, there's only been a maybe two or three that were just kind of dead for the entire night. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it seems like everywhere we go, we always it's always usually a fairly active night, at least for most of the night. Okay. Well, I, I have a couple of questions from that. My goodness. Uh, what is, what's Octagon Hall? I've never heard of that. It's, uh, it's up in Kentucky and it, the house is actually built in the shape of an octagon. Um, and it has a, like a lot of civil war history there. Um, it was real prominent during the civil war. Um, I can't remember the entire history behind it, but I know like a lot of, Civil War um, Confederate soldiers went through there. Um, I, I know a lot of them died on the property. Um, I believe it was first. It was first owned by um, by someone with the Confederate Army. They used it as a uh, um, kind of like a field hospital for Confederate soldiers until the Union came through, and they actually took the home over and they they killed and slaughtered and raped all the women and children whether they were slaves or not um which i know whenever we was up there last uh the the lady had talked to me a lot about was they think that's where from most of the the activity is coming from is from all yeah. of that 
pain that happened whenever the Union soldiers came through and took over the property. The house, another cool part about the house, though, is is um, down in the basement, they still have um, false walls where they um, were moving uh, slaves underground. Um, they followed the tunnels under the, the, the ground of the property from the house all the way out to the river. Um, so, I mean, there's still so much history about that place that they're still uncovering. And, and I think it just kind of all goes to adding into how active this place really is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think a lot of that, um, just because a lot of uh, stories that have been relayed to me, especially about like Civil War era uh, haunts and locations, a lot of that stuff, uh, oftentimes like on battlefields and stuff like that, it can be more like residual energy do you think it's all residual do you think there's some intelligence going on there uh no there's very much some intelligence there because we was getting a lot of intelligent responses with some of the questioning that we had so it's it's definitely uh uh i think a little mixture of both um but we were getting a lot of accurate responses to our questions okay okay um and then with the uh with the getting scratched uh, i'm just curious what do you what do you think about that because that does happen frequently uh for investigators do you think that is necessarily a, a demonic evil force is it dark is it just a ghost that doesn't want you there um everybody always just automatically jumps to demonic or evil um that's yeah. not always the case it, that they could be their only way they may know how to communicate as they may be reaching out just to kind of touch you and it comes out as a scratch. Um, and the same thing, because at the end of the night that night, I ended up with three scratches and automatically going to assume, okay, that's bad. It's not a good sign, but it might not necessarily be that. We still take the precautions just in case, you know, say, hey, nothing's coming home with this. Josh would normally say like a little prayer before we leave just to be on the safe side, you know, because um, mm -hmm. you, you never do know, but it doesn't necessarily always mean that it's bad. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like that. I, I wish more people would kind of set the, the immediate reaction and the fear aside when something like that happens and think, okay, well, what else could this mean? What else could this be? Rather than immediately jump to demonic, because um, that just kind of perpetuates the wrong kind of um, idea, in my opinion. But um, before we move on from uh, this part, uh, you mentioned Scott County Jail. And whoa, these uh, the clips of that you posted of this place were uh, there. There was something in particular. You know exactly what I'm talking about. That was outstanding. Um, can you just tell us the story? How how did the night go? And how did that particular occurrence? How did it take place? What happened? Um, it was one of those nights where it was a very active night. Um, like when we we were just get we weren't even set up yet. We were talking to one of the ladies waiting for the for Miranda who was going to be staying on location with us we were waiting for her to get there and um the other lady Chris she was just talking to us about some stuff we were just un unpacking her gear and I hear a woman from the hallway talking I was like oh hey Miranda's here turn around there's nobody there and I'm, I'm just like is Miranda here and Chris is like no I didn't hear a truck pull up nobody's there I mean so stuff was happening before we even really got started and throughout the night, we was having all this stuff happen, and it would happen right when we would, like, get into a room before we would start recording, or right when we were leaving, when we were changing spots. So it was kind of like toying with us with the night, throughout the night, and we did get some stuff, you know, captured. Um, like, I remember uh, I think in the, the top sales, I think it was, Josh, where we uh, we had set up the, the whiskey and the cigarettes, and yeah, we were saying like, hey, we snuck this in for you guys. Go ahead and get you a smoke, take you a shot. And our EMF detector was lighting up right beside it. Um, yeah. So we captured, I think we captured that on video. Um, what else was it? Um, well, that was whenever the the picture frame flew off the wall the first time. We captured the audio of it happening, but mm -hmm. not, not the actual video footage of it. Yeah, because we had just done an EVP session. And so I was listening to it and recording with my camera, to, kind of like a, a live feedback or whatever. And we hear this loud crash from the hallway. And I was like, what the hell was that? And so we both walk out there. And that's actually in the blooper reel because, you know, Josh almost drops his phone and it startles the both of us. So um, so we walk out there and there's this picture frame in the hallway that's not hanging up anymore. And 
And actually, at the end of the night, that same picture frame is is actually the the clip that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like I just kind of slapped off the wall that night, and when that happened, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're we're wrapping up our night in the kitchen, and you know we have the kitchen door closed, and Josh is a correctional officer, so he's using all these different terms, you know, kind of trying to get them stirred up a little bit. And I remember I'd set my camera down. And right when I sit it down, we hear this woman from the hallway say, help. And we look at each other. It's like, you know, did you hear that? And they're like, you know, that's somebody from the hallway. And so, you know, I grab my camera, walk over and open the door. And I'm like, hello. Right after I say hello, you know, that picture goes flying through there and does a flip in midair. And all before all that, you know, our REM pods going crazy. Our EDI box is fluctuating and going nuts. And, and we have another angle of it and you can see josh messing with the rim pod after i'll walk away trying to get it to stop and it doesn't stop until i say hello as soon as i say hello it stops and then that picture goes flying and you know you can tell by our reaction it, it scared the hell out of us and we probably afterwards what 15 20 minutes with miranda tried to debunk it maybe trying to figure out how it fell off the wall like that we couldn't we couldn't get it to recreate what it did yeah because it was it was held on by like four or five different velcro straps so i mean it wasn't like you know it was just you know barely hanging on a nail or or something like that and was easily just knocked off so we we tried like two or three different things to to recreate that thing flying off because you know there again it's one of the big things we do is we try to debunk everything we possibly can to to make sure that there's no no other logical explanation for what just happened and we we did everything we could and there was just no way even even the way that we tried to hit it to slap it off the wall it still didn't even go the the same way as we caught it being recorded yeah your um your guys's reaction to it was um a absolutely priceless <laughs> by the way <laughs> um I, that's uh anybody want to want to re uh redo the 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 yell the scream <laughs> um no listeners anybody listening uh, you've got to go check out this uh clip we'll we'll give you all those links and stuff near the end of the episode but you've got to check it out it's uh, incredible and then you guys looking at it uh after the fact uh you were actually able because i've seen a bunch of of these types of videos um of you know captures like this and i'm pretty good now at spotting oh, okay yeah there, there there's a a shadow there's an orb blah 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 you know whatever is going on in the video but you guys actually pointed out two things uh when this occurred that i didn't even catch the first couple times through um the there was a shadow over on the on the right hand side of the screen and then an, an like I'm not even sure what to say. It, it's like an arm. It looks like it, it looks like something is there, right mm -hmm. by the right by the the picture. Right. Um, and yeah. It's it's real hard to see all that like in full motion, but when you slow it down, you know, it's clear as day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, whoo. <laughs> it's uh, a little chilly in here. Um, well, um, do you guys do a uh, uh, private residence? investigations as well um we've done my grandmother's house a few times um, okay um we've had some people reach out to us um and we've talked about doing it but it's kind of one of those things that how do we know these people aren't just getting us in here and they're just complete wackos i'm not saying that's going to always going to be the case but we're more cautious when it comes to that because you don't know the people you don't know the history of the place and now if it's somebody that we know um we would have no problem doing it but sometimes some of these other people, some of the stuff that they've described to us that's going on, I was like, man, there's no way all of this is going on. You're still living there. I remember one lady reached out to us, and the stuff she was saying is like stuff that was you would see in like a horror movie. And I'm like, I, was like, I don't know about all this. And I relayed all the messages to the to the team, and they're like, I don't, I don't know if we should go to this house if all this stuff has happened because it sounded like straight up like demonic stuff going on in this woman's house. Yeah, you know, we're we're not fully equipped. To, to, to handle that kind of stuff you know we're not priests or anything so <laughs> no, no yeah. i'm not good at all that yet <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and, and and you're you know you do have to be careful i feel like these days a little bit more careful than uh you used to have to and then you you also never know how somebody is is going to react like they want you to come into their place and 
and see what they're seeing and experience what they're experiencing. And, and, you know, what if you don't, um, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just, um, unfortunately just part of it. So that, that you would say your preference for locations is, is probably going to be a little bit more commercial or, or something that's a little bit more well-known, not, not necessarily private. Yeah. And, yeah. and we'll do like on places that aren't well-known, but it's like a business or something. Mm -hmm. um, we've done three or four places in our hometown that most people probably didn't even know were haunted. We did a, a saloon in, in a in a town last year that pr people didn't know anything about us except for the people that worked there and they experienced all this stuff and they finally reached out and wanted somebody to come out there and unfortunately nothing really happened while we were there yeah. but you know the video they posted is, is what caught our attention so i was like we, we should look into this and you know we'd be the only team that's ever investigated so maybe it'll be super active for us and Unfortunately, it wasn't, but that that happens at times too. So yeah, man, Ooh, I would have loved for you guys to have come and uh, investigated when I was still living in LA. I, I worked at a very very haunted bookstore, which are uh, kind of under the radar, notoriously haunted always. Um, so you you said on another interview that you and your team are, are really made up of believers of the paranormal, and um, I, I know you you do try to like do debunking as well but it kind of caught my interest because most investigators that i've spoken to so far um they're they're fairly skeptical people surprisingly uh they are wide open to the possibility of course but they they always seem to approach their investigations right away ready to debunk ready to find that logical explanation um and then you know go from there where where do you think you guys stand on this scale well, I mean, I, I know for me personally, I mean, <clears throat> yes, 100% absolutely believe in the paranormal, half since I was a kid. But at the same time, we're not going to, we're not going to sit there and say every sound, every noise, everything that we are, are hearing and seeing and dealing with is 100% paranormal, not till we have a chance to, to look at it and find ways to to debunk it. I mean, if we can, because even whenever we listen to the EVPs and stuff, we listen to them over and over, who knows how many times, just, just to make sure that we're all hearing what we think we're hearing and to make sure it's not me talking or somebody else that they're whispering and, and things like that. So, I mean, yeah, we want to try to make sure that everything that we put out there to the world is a hundred percent without a doubt what we would say is paranormal but we do understand that not every everything you're going to encounter is going to be considered paranormal because there's you know there's things that just happen you may hear a a, a knock or something and it, it may have been a car you know passing down the road or something like that and so you have to really deep dive off into all of your evidence before you can put it out there and say anything, um, what it is. And so, yeah, we, we are believers and, and there's nothing in this world that's ever going to change my mind of that. But if we can prove that it was something else, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want to share things just trying to get, you know, views and, and, and this following off of false information. You know, we're, we're a hundred percent about putting, stuff out there that without a shadow of a doubt we know is is paranormal yeah yeah there's there's certainly more than enough uh, groups out there that do do that just want mm -hmm. to share to get the likes and the views and all of that so that is uh yeah i appreciate your your stance on that your take on that yeah and like he said you know we i'm a hundred percent believer too and has have been since i was a child and Whenever something does happen that we know is one of us, we always try to make sure we tag it like, oh, hey, that was me or that was so and so, you know, I bumped into the table, you know, we always try to make sure we tag it. And normally, like when we're doing an EVP session, we always have a camera rolling too. That was Damien that screamed. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so like when we're doing an EVP session, we always try to make sure we have at least one camera going so that way we can watch the video to see okay we heard this on here let's make sure that wasn't josh or that wasn't angel or, or kelly saying something so and nine out of ten times 
it's not nobody talking. So, and, and we have video of that saying, okay, well, you can see them clearly, their mouth isn't moving, they're not seeing anything. So maybe we really got something. So like he said, we always try to debunk, but if there's no way to debunk it, then we're going to say, okay, maybe that was paranormal. Are you into the paranormal, true ghost stories, Bigfoot and alien encounters, or high strangeness and conspiracies? Well, if so, then you should check out my podcast called Somewhere in Dreamland. My name is Ken Mark, and every week I interview authors, researchers, and experiencers alike in the fields of the paranormal, cryptozoology, ufology, and spirituality. So why not take a dive down that rabbit hole with me and search for Somewhere in Dreamland wherever you listen to podcasts. That's Somewhere in Dreamland. All right. So now, uh, what about the rest of your team? Can you kind of introduce us a little and, and uh, everybody's roles? Um, well, the other members is uh, my wife, Kelly. Um, and you got Josh's wife, Angel. Um, Matt and Josh is a really good friend. We've been friends with him for probably 30 years as well. Um, his name is Mark. He actually lives in North Carolina. Um, and then our good friend, Adam, he just recently rejoined the team. Um and they all just kind of have a similar role. They're all investigators. Um, normally we have um, Kelly and Angel kind of do a little bit of research on some places before we go somewhere. Um, sometimes we like to go in just completely blind and not know anything about where we're going. Um, and then, um, like I said, Adam just recently rejoined the team. Actually, his first investigation was the one we went on about a month ago. Um, and <clears throat> we think he actually he actually had a lot of family that grew up in that area. So we think having him there where we were at kind of helped kind of help things out a little bit. So that was pretty cool. Nice, nice. Okay. Um, so I haven't gotten to speak to uh many teams who are quite as big as yours. I mean, six six people. I mean, that's that's a pretty good core amount of people. Um, I was curious what your opinion was on whether you think having the extra people, the extra bodies might contribute to um have like providing extra energy or, or like stirring up certain levels of activity as opposed to times that you guys have gone with fewer people like have you noticed a difference i mean it, it's it it just really depends on the night to be honest um like i said at the scott county jail it was just me and josh and it was super active yeah. but then we've been to locations where it'll be four or five of us there and it'll be kind of dead so it just it really just depends on the night and the atmosphere and and what they're willing to do for us yeah yeah okay um and i have noticed how different groups um they'll, they'll do things or, or like some parts of their investigation a little differently or like to utilize specific tools or different methods that work for them uh what would you say sets rkb apart from other groups out there what are you doing different well like i said i know i know his his correctional background helps us a lot at, at the jails and stuff we go to um I don't know. I don't know of any teams myself that that use that background where they kind of go in using that 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 lingo and kind of talking to them like they're at work and they're stuff like that. So that I think helped us out a lot, especially at at the Scott County Jail. Yeah, basically, um, you're like a you're acting like a trigger object there. Right. Josh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, and he'd he'd bring his handcuffs with him and um, just clicking through the handcuffs, I think, kind of kind of helped am stuff up and. Just, just him talking in general in that way, I think, just really helped. You know, when we went to that jail, and that was the first time we really used any trigger objects was that night. Um, we kind of did at the um, um, what was it, the old Franklin Jail, the old Stone Jail. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought your handcuffs that night too, I think. Yeah, because y'all handcuffed me through the bars of the cell door. That's right. That's right. Um, and and a lot of teams. Even though they won't admit it, you can tell just from watching their videos, they kind of go and provoke it, which is something we don't like to do. Um, yeah. We more or less try to motivate them more than anything. You know, like at the Scott County Jail, you know, I remember Josh saying, you know, you've seen, you've done all this stuff, but we need you to do something to really show us something. And that's when that picture frame got knocked off the wall that second time. They were like, okay, you want to show, here you go. And so instead of going in there trying to piss them off and, and stuff like that, we just kind of talk to them like they're still there. Like, hey, do something yeah. for us. And we more or less give them a little push than anything else. We don't want to go in there and, and, and really upset them and take that risk of something really bad happening to one of us or something following us home, something like that. So 
we always try to be as respectful as possible, which I know a lot of teams say that. But then when you watch their videos and see the way they're talking, I was like, I don't I don't mm. see that being very respectful, in my opinion. So, yeah, yeah, it can be very mm. antagonistic. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, uh, you know, it, it, with if you're going with the main idea that these are these are just people, you know, they were people before. They're just people now, like just just speak to them, just talk to them like you would normally talk to them. And you might have a little bit better you know, luck um, or evidence of it. And I guess maybe on that thought too, what are your thoughts on what you are actually experiencing? Like, are these, are these ghosts? Is it, is it usually pretty intelligent? Do you have some other theory as to, is there something entirely else going on here? I know mm. we, we don't seem to have a whole lot of like <clears throat> things that we would consider as like just residual stuff. You know, and a lot of our questioning and things, it seems to be intelligent answers. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we do a lot of the, the Estes method. And and I, I feel that we get a lot of good responses in doing that. And, you know, that's why, you know, I, 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 I probably love doing it just as much as anyone in the team does. And that's, that was like at the Old Stone Jail, whenever they cuffed me through the, the cell bars. You know, that's what I was doing then. I was blindfolded. I was cuffed. So I couldn't move. I couldn't really do anything. And so I just really opened myself up to being able to hear and listen to everything that was coming through those headphones and getting what seemed to be pretty intelligent responses to the questions the rest of the team was asking. And, you know, being able to kind of put yourself out there like that a little bit and and go through those those motions of things, uh, I don't think we're getting a whole lot of just straight up residual effects and sounds and, and answers. Because a lot of times if we hear a knock or something or a bang, we'll, we'll ask them to do it again. And, they, and most of the time they'll do it right on cue to where like if wow. it was residual, residual it probably wouldn't do it again. And so, like you said, I don't think we get it. We haven't really experienced a whole lot of residual stuff yet. Okay. Okay. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up uh, the, the Estes method, Josh. I've been hearing a lot more about that. And, and um, it's, it's fascinating to me uh, because it's, you know, skepticism aside, and there are a lot of skeptics of that method. And it just kind of confounds me why, especially when you're having these basically conversations, you know, and, and, and it's, it's an unbiased way to do it. You know, you're completely shutting off your, your senses to it. You don't even get to hear the question being asked and you're getting no. intelligent responses to it. So, uh, I don't know. It's, it's very incredible. That, that reminds me of somebody was telling me recently of the Gonsfeld, um, method where it's basically the same, you know, same thing, kind of a subset maybe of uh, Estes method, but same idea. You shut off all the senses and all of that. So that is so cool. I love to see you guys using that. Um, oh, okay. And then kind of a, a random last uh, main question here for you. I Did I hear this right? You guys are starting or going to start a podcast? We're trying to. We've got the how we want to do it down. It's just finding the time to actually sit down and do it. And like I've told Josh, you know, I've already got a ton of guests lined up that, that wants to come on when we actually get it started. Nice. And so it's just really finding the time to sit down and do it. Um, you see, you know, I'll work 48, 50 hours a week. He, he puts in 40, 50 hours a week. And, and Mark, like I said, he's in North Carolina. He probably stays more busy than me and Josh combined with his job. So it's just finding the time to do it. It may just be one of those things where I think I probably have the most free time out of the three. So I may just have to just start it and they just kind of jump in when they, when they, when they can. So it may just be one episode where it's just me and maybe one episode where it's me and Josh and just kind of just start doing it. Cause like I said, we have a ton of people that want to, that's already agreed to come on and, and I've already got us um, like a, a show logo mocked up and, and, and all that stuff. So we've, we've got the, the method now and we just got to get, got to get time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's, um, I, I, I don't want to be like like too obvious like what it's what it's about but um of course it's probably it's going to be on the paranormal and you're going to have guests is is that mm -hmm. going to be kind of the main way you want to do it is is it's a like an interview show a conversation show i think we're just gonna just gonna go on the fly you yeah know? yeah um i know we talked about like our first episode we want to do is just kind of talking about ourselves and stuff we've experienced and 
more or less like an introductory episode before we start bringing people on. Um, because like I have a ton of stuff that that I can talk about that I've just personally experienced growing up. Josh does. Um, I know Mark has some interesting stories he's told us about. And so we have a lot of stuff we want to talk about. And like I said, we just got to sit down and actually find the time to do it. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, uh, you know what? When you get that up, I will be your first subscriber. I, I love that idea, and and it's so cool. Uh, it would be very cool to listen to a show like that coming from, uh, you know, three paranormal investigators and being able to kind of talk on the fly, like, you know, this happened, and this is what we think, and this is how we do it, or you know, a, a guest coming through here and there, and just I, I love shows like that. So I, more more <laughs> power to you. And I think we discussed. I don't think we're going to do any kind of editing. Just straight through? Just straight through. So, like, if there's a blooper in it, it's going to be in there. If, you know, we get to talking kind of off subject, it's going to be included. Just because we feel like the raw, unedited, uncut stuff is is better than anything. So, like, a lot of our videos and stuff we post, the only editing we may do is maybe cutting the clip down a little bit. Yeah. Instead of showing nine minutes of somebody just sitting there talking, we kind of get to the main focal point, which... I do want to start posting more of, of what goes in, in between to kind of show people that it's not always stuff happening, you know, because we could be somewhere for eight hours and nothing happened. I mean, there was a location we went to. It's actually our very first investigation after Brushy Mountain. After probably three hours, me and Josh sat down on a couch and started falling asleep. <laughs> it was just it was just that dead that night. And, yeah. and a lot of people think that based on what these shows portray, that it's constant. And it's not, you know, you, like I said, you can be in a location for six, seven, eight hours and go through the evidence and not have a single thing to share with people. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of so, like, kind of like fishing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that's the term we use. <laughs> yep. And, and doing it that way without cutting it up too much or, you know, putting too much onto it. Um, I think that would speak a lot to your transparency as a group too. So people would really appreciate that. Well, I look forward to that. Um, all right, uh, before I wrap these episodes, per usual, I like to throw some quick uh, random questions at you, um, either generally paranormal or geared toward your work. Uh, now, with both of you here, um, I can just kind of go back and forth. Uh, so who wants to go first? I'll go first. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Damien. Sending spirits into the light uh, is a debated topic in the paranormal investigating world whether you should be doing it whether it can actually be done what's rkb's stance on that well for me personally i think if they're ready to move on they're going to move on whether you're trying to help them or not they're here for a reason they're going to move on for a reason um whether we tell them hey you need to move on you know they're going to do it whether they want to or we want them to or not so we don't necessarily try to help them move on we just we, we more or less try to talk to them and get their history figure out why they're still here okay all right uh josh um a question i have seen posed on social media more than a few times has been whether or not it's a bad idea to investigate your own home do you do you think it's as dangerous as people make it out to be no i really don't um i mean it doesn't it doesn't change to me it doesn't change anything that goes on in any of these locations because if if a, if a team goes in to investigate, whether it be their own home or, you know, one of these sites that we go to, if it was that dangerous or posed that big of a threat, um, then the next group that would go into any location should have an even better experience each time after the next group. And that doesn't happen. So it would be no different in your own home, really. I, I say in a way it could be more beneficial because then maybe you kind of get to learn and understand who is actually sharing the home with you from the other side. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd have to agree with you. Just I've, I've had personal experiences doing just testing equipment and stuff in my own home and, you know, nothing came of it. I think maybe a lot of uh, the same kind of fear that uh, people put behind the use of the Ouija board might, might kind of be the same same thing i mean it can and it can't you know right. all right but all right then mm -hmm. the investigating the whole your own home thing you know where we live there's stuff that happens almost on a daily mm -hmm. and me and my wife's investigated numerous times and, and nothing 
has ever changed. Um, I mean, because we do want to know who's here and who's, you know, knocking on the wall or whispering or doing that. We, we want to know. And so, you know, if you reach out to another team, you may be waiting who knows how long for them to come out. So I'm just like, you know what, because Josh and Angels came over here and, and we let them do a lot of the talking. So we weren't technically, quote unquote, investigating our home. Oh, they were doing it, but we were still here. And what's really crazy about where we live, and I've told Josh about it before, is it may be dead for like two or three months. Like we won't have anything happen. And then about a week or two before we have a scheduled investigation, things here start picking up. Oh, it'll kind of amp up and it'll be like on the daily. We'll have, you know, knocking on the wall or we're here whispering somebody walking through the hall when there's nobody home or everybody's in bed and it'll pick up for those week or two before and then kind of die back down. And we've noticed that over the last year or so, it'll start doing that. Oh, okay. Which is, which is, we haven't really figured out why yet. So yeah. Yeah. What's, what's kicking it up. Huh? Well, we're on, we're on their time sometimes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Damien, what's the most overrated piece of ghost hunting equipment and why? Most overrated. Um, I, I would honestly, I'd probably say the Ouija board because if you have two people using it or three people, how do you know one of the other one, other people isn't moving it? Yeah. I mean, there's no way to prove that there's nobody moving it. I mean, we've never used one, but I know a lot of teams, you know, do and stuff. And it's just, I don't know. If you can buy it in the toy section at Walmart, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're going to get a whole lot of use out of it. Yeah. All right. All right. Fair enough. Um, Josh, if money and time were no issue, what's the dream location? Oh, man. <laughs> money and time was no issue. You know, I would... I would like to go to two places, money, time, no issue, and, and spend a lot of time in one of these two places. And one would be um, probably around the New Orleans area, just because of, of you know, all the things that's happened down in that location. Uh, Louisiana in a whole, to me, is, is, a, is a hot spot in itself. And then I would love to go over to, like, the U.K., England, places like that where, you know, history goes back a lot further than it does here as far as, you know, things that you've learned about history wise and, and stuff uh, to know that all the bad things that's happened uh, through plagues and stuff over in the UK and, and England and, and all the death just from all the plagues over there. I, to me, it just tells me there's probably a, a lot more activity going on in those places the the underground catacombs and and stuff like that is uh it's real interesting to me okay yeah that that would be cool gosh I, I would love just to go to visit so take me with you um all right last one um i've asked this one before but i i so love it so i i do bring it back every now and then so this will be for both of you um you die and you become a ghost who do you haunt to scare and who do you haunt? Cause you don't want to leave. <laughs> um, I would say like, if I died tomorrow, I would probably haunt my mom. <laughs> <laughs> probably to scare her a little bit, not to the point where she wants to move, but just to kind of keep her on her toes and stuff. Um, and haunt cause I don't want to leave would probably be my wife. So. All right, Josh. My kids, both answers. <laughs> <laughs> it's put okay. me through so much hell over the last 18 plus years. It's it's time for me to, to give them a little payback. Uh. <laughs> I love that. All right, you guys. So uh, what's coming up next for RKB? Um, we don't have anything officially booked at the moment. Um, we're looking at a few different locations. We're talking about going back to Octagon Hall because um, we haven't been in a couple of years. Um, what about the thing we talked about the other day where you was going to put a poll up and have people vote on, on one of our next locations? Yeah, I, I did. I put that poll up on yeah, Twitter I and Instagram. That. I put it up on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, I chose three locations. I chose another old jail. I chose a funeral home, and I chose an old Civil War location. And right now, the uh, the funeral home is winning by a long shot, So, which is what I was hoping would win because that's the one I want to do the most. Um <laughs> There's actually a funeral home down in Mississippi we, we want to go to and because they still have actual caskets in the in the, the funeral home. And we've talked about 
which I think we want to put Josh in a casket to do the acid me- acid method. <laughs> We've talked about doing that. Um, so that was that's something we, we want to try if we ever get down there or any location that may have a casket in there. That's something we want to try. But oh no! Um, so so Josh is your Aaron. You just you kind of force him into the small spaces and the the scary dark places. Well, I, I think he actually volunteered for it. I think we just kind of threw it <laughs> out there, and he was like, "Hell, I'll do it." You know. Okay. Um, I don't really know if we if we had an Aaron of the group, it would probably be me because I get scared the most. <laughs> <Yeah>. So. <laughs> um so uh, that, that's that's what my wife says too we you know you're the Aaron of the group you get spooked more than anybody else so and, and when you watch their show he's the one that always gets gets spooked probably the most out of all of them so he, d- he does and it's it's always so much fun to watch though very right. entertaining all right uh where can my audience find and follow you guys we're on pretty much all social media platforms um facebook twitter instagram tiktok um, we're all at, it's all RKB paranormal. We're, we're trying to use those f- platforms more for promotions of what we're doing and stuff like that. We're trying to make our YouTube page where we post most of our evidence. Um, cause we want, we really want to just make our YouTube, our main focal point. So like when I'm posting about this show, I'll be posting it on our Facebook or our Twitter, stuff like that, where our next investigation most everything's going to be on, on YouTube. And I'll just like, I'll post the YouTube links on our other social media and stuff like that. So it'll direct it all towards our YouTube page. So. Okay. Okay. And I'll, I'll be including um, all of the, the, the direct links to all of that. And of course, to your YouTube uh, down in the show notes for this episode. Um, before we sign off, do you guys have any words of wisdom or a, a final message you'd like to leave with everyone? I would say for like anybody that's wanting to do this, you don't need a ton of extensive equipment to do this. I know a lot of these shows portray having a ton of expensive equipment. When we went to Brushy Mountain, we had a digital recorder and an EMF detector. And we had stuff happening all night long. We weren't able to document it, of course, because we didn't have a camera or anything. But when you go to do this, all you really need, to be honest, is a couple of good cameras and a good two or three digital recorders because most everything is going to be documented on those things. Yeah. The other stuff is good to interact with them, but if you have nothing to record with, you're not going to prove anything. So if you want to start this, start out with just a camera and a digital recorder and then kind of go from there and see what happens. Okay. Josh, final thoughts. Just, just be true to the, to the business of, of paranormal. Don't overindulge anything. Be very transparent. You know, nobody wants to see the fake stuff. People want to see what's what's real and what's really happening. Uh, I can't stand watching the shows where everything is over dramatized and and stuff like that. So just just stay true to to what you're what you're capturing and and share with everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you guys one more time. Thank you so much for coming on today as this has been a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we appreciate it. I do want to plug one more thing if I can. Absolutely. Um, We're actually going to be attending our first paranormal convention this year. Um, It's going to be in October at the uh, Wilson County Fairgrounds in Lebanon, Tennessee. It's called Phantom Paws and Historic Cause, and it's going to be for a really good reason behind all of it. Um, the teams that are putting it on, they're donating half of it to a senior dog center and they're donating the other half the money to like haunted historic locations to kind of help them stay on their feet and, and keep their doors open and stuff. So it's for a really good cause. And like I said, we're going to be there, um, you know, showing our stuff off and there's going to be a lot of other great teams. And I think they got some mediums that's going to be there some and some other really great vendors that they've got lined up. So it should be a good time. Oh, that sounds awesome. And it's for a good cause too. So, so people check that out, get the tickets, support the good cause and go see uh, Damien and Josh uh, and their team RKB uh, there. That's wonderful. I'll include, I'll include that info as well. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a good one. You too. Thank you. Thanks. I want to thank Damien and Josh so, so much for coming on the show. I can't wait to listen to your podcast when it's up, you guys. 
Everyone listening, please do go follow RKB Paranormal on all of their socials and YouTube. You gotta see that Scotts County Jail capture. You'll dig it. And check out the Paracon that they will be attending. Again, it is going to a good cause. Love that. Folks, want to give you a heads up that next week, Paranorm Girl is going dark. I do, however, have a very special bonus episode this Friday for you all to look forward to. As always, follow me on all of the socials at Paranorm Girl Pod. Shoot me a message at Paranorm Girl Pod at gmail.com. That's a wrap for now. Until Friday, stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open.